All right, so let's get back to it. We're creating a random sentence generator. Disastrous yummy bicycles follow this robot? A boisterous entertaining vehicle drinks a computer. Where we left off last time was uh, we're able to generate a very simple sentence, but the sentences aren't that interesting. Those gray bats drink a board of directors? The high person follows these computers? Today we're going to start off doing a little bit of cleaning. Those entertaining snowy agitators consume this government. And then we'll, we'll get around to uh, making our verbs more interesting. We'll, we'll be able to deal with both, both uh, plural forms of words, and then we'll also be able to add adjectives to the words that we're creating. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, so the first little bit of cleanup that I'm going to do is instead of having these different other objects um, just like loose in the parent object, I'm going to put them inside of a value. Um, and we'll maybe see why later. Maybe it won't be clear why I'm doing this though. Then we'll have to move all of these accesses into the value part of them. It's a bit annoying that uh, that these are harder to get at, but um, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Okay, the next bit of cleanup that we're going to do, where we have um, determiners and nouns selected, as well as uh, verbs, those those aren't wrapped up into an object. They're they're just like loose strings, which we don't want because, for example, like when we have a noun, there's like plural or singular. So uh, so in addition to these uh, like make noun phrase functions, we're going to also want to have make noun functions or make verb functions or make determiners or we probably won't do determiners. That'll be our special case. But anyway. Um, to differentiate an object that just points to other objects, we're going to add a value on, on these called, uh, called leaf. So a noun will be like, there will be nothing below it in terms of like our tree structure, right? Uh, you can think of like this as, as being our, our tree structure, right? So if this is a verb and this is a noun and this is a determiner, there's nothing below it, so we'll call them leaves. Cool, so now that we have these updated, uh, we'll also need to update our to string function um, for our nouns and our verbs. Which is uh, a bit annoying, these keep getting longer, but that's all right. Um, the other thing that we want to be able to do is like a singular noun and a plural noun. So right now we only have singular nouns listed, but uh, we're gonna want to move on to plural nouns. We're going to look at the, the Penn State Tree Bank uh, list of part of speech tags, uh, which is this here. And we can see that um, for a, a plural noun, they use NNS, and for a singular noun, they use NN. So we're just going to have, we're going to have both versions in our code that, that we're going to look at. So I also added some some new nouns to our list, but but now we have the singular version of a word as well as the plural version of it. 
Um, so then here we have to be we have to be careful then with this new object because this isn't just going to be a string; it's going to be a value, and or it's going to be an object. And that means that when we write this noun to um, a string, we're going to need a way to be able to select which of the strings inside of the object we're going to display. Right, there's going to be a singular version and a plural version, um, so that means that we'll have state inside of here that we have to that we have to manage. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just uh, sample either true or false. That will be what determines if our noun is is singular or plural or not. So down here, if the noun that we are looking at is singular, right, then uh, will want to return the singular version of it. Um, otherwise, we're going to want to return the uh, the plural version of it. So the plural, ver plural version is the NNS, and the singular version is the NN, right? Given that we now have singular and plural nouns, we'll also have to deal with the determiner. So like, for example, if our uh, if our determiner is a, then it wouldn't make sense to say a bats. We would just want to say bats. To handle these different cases, I'm going to leverage a library from the internet. Um, I'm going to run npm init so I can have a package JSON in this repository. Um, and then I'm going to install uh, the Ramda library. Um, so I'm going to import it like this. Uh, specifically, the function that I'm going to use is called cond. In order to use import statements in a node project, I'll also have to go into my uh, my package JSON and specify that this is a uh, a module type project, um, which is just a bit annoying more than anything. Uh, And then I'm just going to create a simple function with uh, with Ramda. This is how you do it. Um, I'm also going to get the equals function from Ramda. And uh, so if our determiner string is A, then um, we're just going to return the empty string. If our determiner string is the, then uh, we're, we're going to return the. Um, and then we're just going to run that function on our determiner string, or on our yeah, on our on our determiner. In the future, we're going to have to add more to this cond block. So, uh, in in the uh, in in that case, um, we just want the function to fail. Uh, so I'm going to write this function and. Um, I like doing this because this error object, um, if I have the, it throwing in, encapsulated in this function like this, then I can make changes to that error object later if I want to, like change the name or something. Um, so anyway, in the case, if it gets to this case, uh, t capital T is a function that always returns true. Um, if it gets to this case, then uh, we're just going to fail. Um, we're going to say that the determiner not implemented. Um, and we should be able to find that through a stack trace just fine. Forgot to put parentheses. Forgot a join here. Uh, we'll also want to filter out any falsy values because uh, this has the possibility of being an empty string. And if we join something with an empty string, then we'll have an extra space in the output that we get. We have plural nouns now, as well as singular nouns. And when we have um, the determiner as A, then it is just, uh, it is removed from the output. Okay, our next step will be implementing adjectives. So we're going to make a, uh, a maker function for adjectives. The pen state tree bank refers to adjectives as JJ. Um, so we're just going to go along with that. 
uh, this will be a leaf node. Okay, so then in our make np function, we're going to use an array for the adjective slot since we'll want to be able to use like multiple adjectives. So we can say like the good evil dog or something like that. Um, we're gonna put a function uh, inside of this object called add JJ. And this is a cool little um, bit of JavaScript here. If you use the this keyword inside of a function, uh, which is inside of an object, that this refers to the outer object. So I can do this.value.jjs.push um, and then I can make a new jj and just add it to it. And then for convenience, we'll, uh, we'll do return this like that. When we make this np and we decide uh, that we want to add like adjectives, we, we can do it by just doing add jj, add jj like that. Uh, so the way that I'm gonna write it is like this. So we'll, we'll create an array of size 0, 1, or 2, and then uh, the, 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 the number of calls that we make to add JJ will be like the length of that array. And we'll start with just the regular NP function. So this will give us a, uh, a new noun phrase which has um, 0, 1, or 2 adjectives inside of it. Uh, what we'll also have to deal with writing the adjectives here when we have them. Um, we could make a new case, but uh, adjectives are pretty simple. Uh, they're just strings. We're not gonna have different variations like we had for the nouns. Um, so let's just create a constant here called a JJ string. So the noun phrase is going to have this JJ's object on it. And uh, we're just gonna map it to its value and then we're going to join it together using a comma and a space and then we're just going to include, include it in all of our outputs here. Um, since this the size of this array is potentially zero, uh, it may give us the empty string when we join it here. So we're going to filter those out so we don't get extra spaces in our output. I forgot to add the range function. So I'll just use Ramda's range function and Ramda's range, range function, I think you have to give it two arguments. So the first argument, I'm just gonna put zero. This should be an N, not a V. There, so here we can see that uh, we got an adjective in our output. Let's see if we can get two adjectives there we go. Bad, evil alligators attack the governments. There is still one thing that we have to do here, and I think this one extra thing is going to be the hardest part. Here we have an example of what we still need. So here this says, a agitator destroy the government. So it should be destroys. We need to use the correct form of the verb, given the, the plurality of the noun. So we're going to have to do the same thing as we did with the nouns where each of these verbs is going to have um, variants. So I have this new array here, um, which has the variants as well as like a couple additional verbs that I threw in for fun. Um, and uh, VB here and VBZ come from the Penn State tree diagram. Penn, Penn State tree project, Penn, tree, Penn State tree bank project, part of speech tags list. Which is, uh, which is here. So we'll find um, VB is the, is the base form of the verb, and VBC is the verb third person singular present. So in the particular incorrect case that we have, we have a agitator destroy the government. A agitator is a third person singular noun, which means that for destroy, we want to use the third person singular noun conjugation of the verb. So this is the relevant piece of code that we would have to change. 
we have really nothing to go off of currently to decide whether or not we should use the uh, the VB or the VBZ version of the verb. Um, so the, the the reason why is because we need to we need to be able to access the parent from the node, and uh, we haven't built in yet the ability to access the parent. Um, so the way that I'm going to do this is by writing a function, a new function called contextualize. What contextualize is going to do is it's going to create references from the child nodes to their parents. So it's going to take um, each one of these values is going to have a parent reference on it. So we'll initialize them as, as null. And uh, it potentially makes sense for these to be null, like uh, the use of a verb phrase will only really make sense when it's used inside of a sentence, right? Like if, uh, if this is like, what was it called? The constituency relation that we have for our sentence, right? If we don't have this noun phrase over here, then it doesn't really make sense how we're going to conjugate this verb. To implement our contextualize function, we want to traverse our sentence structure. So if we have this, we want to start at the sentence and then we just want to like visit each of the nodes. And uh, as we visit each of the nodes, we're, we're just going to add a reference to the, mm -hmm. to the parent. We're going to mutate our object um, so that the, the parent key points at the parent. Okay, so to uh, implement our contextualize function, um, we're going to use the, the values function on, on the node value key. Um, and that's going to give us an array of, of each of the, the parts of speech um, at each node. So it's going to be like a noun phrase, a verb, a verb phrase, like what, what have you. Um, when we added the adjectives, however, what we got was, uh, was an array. So this this expression here may give us uh, an array of arrays. So we'll, we'll want to leverage the, uh, the flatten function from Ramda to just turn it into a regular array. And then uh, we'll also want to fill, filter out any of the nodes, these inner nodes, which um, are not an object. And the reason that we would want to do that is like, for example, our determiners, um, we didn't make a, like a make De determiner function for it. We're just using string values. Um, so we're going to iterate over each of these and we're just going to assign the parent of uh, the child to this to this value that we're passing along to our contextualize function. And then um, we'll want to contextualize that child element as well. That's the way that we uh, traverse our our structure, our sentence structure. And we'll want to stop doing that when we encounter a leaf node. So we're only going to recurse when we're not at a leaf node. And, and then once we're done with that, we're going to return the argument. And that way, we can just uh, wrap this sentence um, object in, inside of our contextualize function. Since we now have the contextualization, we can start here, go to the parent value, and then from there go to the parent value again. And then we'll be able to access the noun phrase and then the noun. Here, um, we're, we're actually at the verb phrase here, not the verb, so we only have to go to the parent one time. So we can go the parent, which will be the sentence, and then we'll do dot value, and then we'll go to the node phrase, or the noun phrase. And then we'll go to the noun, and then we'll check if it is singular. If it is singular, then we'll want to use the third person singular version of the verb. Otherwise, uh, we'll just use the, uh, the base form of the verb. And so, so here, when we have a, a third person singular noun, right, we get the uh, third person singular conjugation of the verb. And um, when we get a third person plural, then we use the base form of the verb. As, um, as one final thing, we can add some more determiners pretty easily. Um, so we can just add, uh, whoops, this and that are also determiners that we can use in addition to a and the. 
And the only thing that we should have to change, I believe, is uh, this condition block. So we can know um, what to use in, in, in those cases. So in the plural case, right, we would say uh, these things. And in the, um, in the other case, we would say those things. So here, yeah, we can see uh, a terrible reporter attacks these reporters. Or uh, a reporter destroys those reporters. So it's just a fun little addition to our random sentence generator. 